just had to be here. Thanks, Greg, for organizing another meeting. I remember 20 years ago, my old stuff, the Zerks of Northern Ireland team was there and we were on it. And, uh, they're very good at putting together meetings, publications, and workshops. And uh, when you send the invitation, said, what are we talking about? Oh, oh, share with you guys what I'm doing. It's actually a research that I'm conducting now. You know, it's, a, it's a research project funded by PNET, it's a, it's a big uh, funding agency in Brazil. And uh, we are concerned about mapping using a EC to find the minerals in general. And I, I decided to put together data that I'm organizing right now, processing now. So I have some co-authors here, I'm going to give credit to them. And then myself, Luciano, and Joe, we are from the University of Brasilia, the engineering department. And uh, Arthur and Nilson, we are from the uh, Universidade Federal Fluminense, so the marine geology group. So when I say, well, searching for polymetallic crusts and nodules in the Brazilian EZ, the Brazilian EZ is a borders. Is it in a part of the, the, the Atlantic Ridge there, if you look there? But anyway, I chose this spot here because we are very interested in uh, the Rio Grande Rise. Is a, is a, is a plateau. Uh, it's, it's, it's an amazing area. It's, it's, it's surrounded by a depth of about uh, 3,500 meters, and then the plateau raised to 600 meters. So it's, a, it's a very pronounced feature. In the south of Africa. And I, and I changed a little bit the title. I think Brazilian EZ in extension. This is an extension of the Brazilian continental shell that we apply to. At the moment, we have a license from uh, uh, the International Seedland Authority to explore the area. And uh, so I chose the uh, we are going to rise because uh, we're looking for polymetallic crust and nodules exactly in this area. And uh, the, the Brazilian Geological Service, so the CPRM, the, the, the survey here, the central area, they spend a lot of time, a lot of money collecting loads of things, like set size and samples. Uh, Photographs, videos, you know, they, they, they have it all. And they prepare a, a nice habitat mapping, like faces mapping, map on the area. And I, I, I will borrow this map from them as a background for, for the presentation. And I use it as, as my groundwork. And, uh, and this data is a public domain data, actually, there's a link here if you want to check that data. So I, I I I took part of this this project of the, the, the extension uh, the continental shelf as you can see. So I had access to this data. It's a data collected by the Navy for the extension of the continental shelf, and the, and the data crosses you know, the the Rio Grande of the dryers. And, uh, and it crosses that central area. So what we will choose this small area here. And we process the backscatter in the bathymetry, but not the backscatter in the bathymetry that they use to make the map. Another set of backscatter, the backscatter acquired by the Navy is other. And the idea is that can I learn the acoustic signature? Of the polymetallic crusts, and then look for the polymetallic crusts in other areas because they do, they cannot reproduce you know, the same model of survey. They use this this have a lot of time, a lot of money, and uh, and they want something quick. Can you go there with a multi beam and have a, a, a map of probabilities? You know, have. Well, I would recommend that you go to this area, not to that one. So the idea is to learn the 
that. Who's the signature of the crust? The crust is this red. All of this here. In the end, it looks right in the, in the other areas. And uh, so uh, I'm putting together the map here. So I, it's actually my, my pair of glasses here. I put like my pair of glasses as well. As, uh, Scale here. So you have this the blue area here. It's a it's a it's a foreign ooze. It's a very fine ooze. And uh, it's a city like for me it looks like city like. And the yellow area is like a, it's a, a carbon carbonate sand. There's some sort of consolidation. You can see that in the carbonate sand and juice, carbonate sand and juice. And uh, in, the, in the red area, this is actually the crust, the polymetallic crust and others. Okay. This was this uh, this bottom photographs and this nice work is, is in my thesis that I, I, I gave reference to the two slides ago. So we will concentrate my analysis three classes, you know, the rules, the, the crust, and the sense. And uh, so my idea is to search for polymetallic crust with multiple next step. How? What can I do? <clears throat> what tools can I use? So I will try three tools. The ones that I have, I will try the mosaic, as you guys talk, the nice mosaic. As you say. I will try the statistical analysis, <laughs> the work that uh, he the Sabir talked about. And I will talk, of course, the angular response and uh, reverse model. Let's see what we can do. Well, okay, number one, uh, mosaic. We have the multi beam, we have a transmitting beam. We form like uh, 480, 500 beams. Okay. For each beam, we have a time slip. So this time slips on course, I have to compensate for transmission loss. Use the, 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 the bathymetry to compensate for footprint, acoustic footprint, and so on. So you can have a, like, a compensated beam. So if that beam would be just part of the annual response. So if I stitch all the bits from that beam, I'm going to have one annual response. This is the, the way that I will process it back together. And then, so we have to have one angle response, will be just one line from that, what they call the waterfall. Have the water, uncompensated waterfall. And then I remove the angle response from the, angle, the, the waterfall. I have a flat text uh, here. And finally, I apply the navigation. We're going to work the, the waterfall. To, so this is the, the, the way of having a, a compensated backscan. Uh, all this processing, I just put this quick thing for you. I, I've been using QGIS, I like it a lot. Tim Nation that use QGIS for that uh, classification. We are very happy to do it. And uh, it's open source. It's very easy to include uh, plugins and in Python. So all the processing was done directly from the, the raw data using this plugin here in the So it's, 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 it's like there's this Well, after processing the back scatter, so I can see clearly six different uh, uh, faces in the back scatter mosaic. Thus, and the sands in the top. And, and I put some water from that from that thesis that I mentioned in the, in the second slide. And uh, well, we, we, we can clearly see that the, the crust, uh, they have high density. It's the higher density. The lowest will be the wheat, the sand, and the sand. How can I measure it? I want a number, minus 23, minus 15. So 
And that was the question that the healer was talking about. Do I get the average of every vegetarian that was there? Is that fair or not? So we, that's not an easy answer. So, so we, we bring the statistics. You know? If I if I just get uh, I get the mosaic and I make a histogram of the mosaic, I normally get something uh, that looks like a normal distribution. If I if I will take the the average vector from that mosaic, I guess I'm not good for this. But if you use beam average backscatter, you get histograms that look like a log normal distribution. And if you get the wrong, it's different samples, time series samples, you get a person closer to relay distribution. So you see that the, uh, the, the sort of chose to use a way low distribution. It's a very simple distribution, it has two parameters. The central one would be the average one scale, the three for the alpha parameter. There's a beta parameter, there's a shape. So the shape is one, is exponential to Rayleigh and uh, log norm and then log. And uh, so if you, you fit a weight load distribution, somehow you get the sample value and get, you get the, the level of processes here. Let me see how, how average is that text scatter? Right? There's a nice twist about this uh, weight load distribution. That if you if you have a, a sentence for like this one here, A, you have this nice wave of which is a blue line here. But imagine that this sand is contaminated with some high entropy scatters. What is that? It be the crust that I knew before, it be roller lines, could be whatever. Some high entropy scatters, just like you're showing this picture. So the presence of those scatters will distort this distribution. Here we have two distributions here. One from the, I will call the substrate, the sand, and the and from top. So by fitting the distribution, somehow we could separate the, the, the substrate from the scatters. This one, uh, we, we published this in the paper. This is from the, the mouth of the Amazon. This is a near field of uh, rolling lights. So if you follow this line here, so one, two, three, four, five, six, you see that the backscatter changes a lot. And that's completely contaminated with rolling lights. But when you adjust the distribution, the alpha parameter is almost the same. Okay, the substrate is the same. But you see, there's a, a, a distortion between the, the actual measured histogram and the adjusted distribution. That distortion here, we, we, we calculate this difference is our delta parameter. So you see that the delta parameter changes along the line. So somehow, the difference in X here is, is following the delta parameter. So it could be that the delta parameter is actually measuring the density of the lights in this case. So coming back to, to the Vendange plateau, you see if we go to the to the blue area with the, the parabolas, you know, we have a very low back scatter and we fit nicely. Um, we call solution. We have the, we have the lowest mm -hmm. back scatter, so the alpha parameter is minus 38. And if you go to the same, the, the, the yellow one, minus 28, then you can do this. And if you go to the, to the red areas, we have something like minus 23, minus 21. So the alpha parameter can work pretty well as a, as a central value for the line. But if you look at the delta parameter, that's that's a very interesting for me. The delta parameter in the blue area is very low. 
but it means there's no distortion between the actual histogram and the frequency distribution. But if you go to the red area, the distortion is very high, five percent. Maybe this is something that I should look for. I'm looking for trusts. I will look for histograms that are very distorted. They have higher values. And uh, I will I will just make a comment here today. I do the same that at Sikam, and I believe that that comment here. And, since Xavier was talking about that, about the repeating measures of backscatter. Well, it's just a comment that, that we, you, you cannot trust backscatter. Okay. Somehow. Yeah, because backscatter is a, it's a, it's a random variable. And, and you see that the telemetry is a ambiguous. And somehow we try to use the same tools of telemetry and backscatter. But I just saw here a, a nice histogram of activity. So if I go to a place and measure the activity a thousand times, well, with a lab lab, let me do like a multi Go there with a lab lab, measure that, and make a, a histogram. Well, that, that dispersion here around this nice normal distribution is due to problems in measurement, well, position, and, and measurement. It's not due to the a change in bathymetry itself, unless you, you came back one year and the see what changed. So the, the bathymetry is a turning issue. And uh, the errors that you have with the store distribution that you have in measurements is due to measurement errors. But in backscatter, no backscatter. So I, I, I go to this blue area here. Okay. Uh, if I measure that, that's just growing dice. But you know that you get a number. You know? So, see, if, if, if I roll a dice, so the, the next scatter here would be a, a, a four sided dice. This one here, the yellow, like a, 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 a eight sided. This, this is a six sided, eight sided, 12 and 20. Okay? So, I roll a dice, I get a two. And I ask, did that two come from blues, the sand, or from the crust? In order to answer that question, I have to throw the dice a hundred times, get an average. If the average is close to three point five, I say, well, it's a really that's the difference. So say, sometimes we read that oh we cannot trust next scatter. Okay, next scatter has a huge variability. Well, it's a random variable. Supposed to have. So you cannot use one measurement of that scatter. You have to use the run of which extract from the distribution of that scatter. It's an important thing. So using the alpha parameter, now I can separate you know, uh, the process. So maybe I will look for alpha parameters higher than 25 degrees. You can see. Now for this higher than 25 degrees, it's a place that I should look for trust. But I can also use the other two parameters from the distribution, the beta parameter, which is the, the, the shape parameter, and the delta. The delta, you see, the action is the key to look for the trust. If I have a delta parameter higher than 40%, or close to 5, I'm be sure there's something distorting of the distribution. You see, the, the, the sense you get one percent too. In uh, my computations, after that sand, you have a consolidated batch of the carbon. Well, angular response. Angular response. Well, when you see a very nice angular response, I am ask you to look at this to the histogram. To the any area. If instead of doing a 1D histogram, take a 2D, what it means? I have an angle, okay, backscatter value, and the color is the, the, the amount of samples in that backscatter angle, okay? So blue, I have a small amount of samples, red and white, very high. So 
Actually, that's the measurement. So how can I assemble other response? So 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 you have to use the statistics here too. Okay. So when uh, we we develop a model based on the greater models, because normally the, the models that we use for next year, the Jackson models, or they, they, they suppose a, a fluid support, no, no consolidation, and they do not stay with frequency. So I, we adapt some greater models. This is, this is, this is what a fluid model would fit a very, a, a very consolidated support. This is one of one, uh, Angular response that uh, we we the sending you know, the impossible ones. See the the, the radar model can be easily there. And uh, so the, the model has three parameters. One parameter for the impedance counters, one parameter for the roughness, and one for the volume. One for the volume. And uh, so we use this data that was acquired in 10 years with the cross area data. And uh, you see it goes from 143 to 450 kilohertz. And we adjust the model. And the model, uh, we got three parameters. So you see the frequency and the parameter that we got from the model. So the, the, the impedance is almost the same. It should be the same. If you change the frequency, the support remains the same. So it's good that the impedance was uh, quite stable around 2.6. The volume, okay, is, is going above. You see a break here in the, in the, in the roughness. You see the roughness was around 2 centimeters, and then I got 1. It, 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 and it break around 300 meters. Well, and uh, the problem is that the models normally assume that you have a power law in the roughness. So we have to have a low frequency sent waves and then a higher frequency and then a higher frequency. But in, in nature, you see a break, you know. I, 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 I see, uh, well, you know, that, that low frequency of sent waves and then there is a gap and then you go to the to the level of brain size. So, so we can see this break here. This is the model. The model was actually measuring this roughness of the sand. And then when you go to higher frequencies, you close, you have a shorter wavelength, and you're not seeing it anymore. Okay. So we so that's we 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 use now a four parameter model. We have two frequencies. To the spatial frequencies for the for the rocks. So see, so I use this four parameter model here, and you see the sense they 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 converge the same uh, in minus two point one. But in terms of the same volume around zero point five, but in terms of roughness, you have one eight four three. Two zero four zero two seven three eight. So you see the difference between the the the, the short wavelength, the long wavelength, is getting is smaller here. Here I have almost the same number. My interpretation is that you you are uh, surveying in different directions of the same wave. Sometimes we're seeing, sometimes we're not. You know? When you see it, you get the, that difference there. When you do not see, you get the same value. And uh, just for the rules, if you get the lower impedance, which is consistent, then you get a very low volume. And quickly going to the crest, you, what is amazing that if you look at the angular response, you have more than a 10 dB more. So you in mosaic, you have a mosaic of 23. And uh, when you 
you use the model, you get exactly the same impedance. The difference is in the body. You see? As the, the, the crusts, they, they, they are mixed with the sand, they will increase the, the, the volume of reverberation that comes back to the soil. So, this is basically the, I, I think it's the last slide. I, I apologize. So, if I, if I would like to look for press, I would look for impedance between 2.1 and 2.2. I will look for alpha parameters greater than 25. I, I use that delta parameters distortion higher than 4%. When I look for high volume step from, from the model, well, I have to put together the mosaic, the statistics. Well, this is we, we are processing too with a, a, a head a supported profile that's helping me a lot. Uh, what we are doing, we're doing like a bottom detection, we have every trace, then I get samples around the bottom detection. And I just printed here with this forward table the maximum value of amplitude around the bottom detection. And I have a nice correlation here. So we're processing this bottom of the foundation we should include parameters extracted from some bottom for five meter at the bottom. That's one thing that could be added to this. Sorry. Thank you. More time with time. Thank you, Lisa.